Hi, I'm Kelly Porter Wilson. Thank you for joining me, albeit virtually, from my basement studio. I was so excited to be participating in the 10th annual Art Off fundraising event for K-12 Gallery and Teen Educational and Joint Adult Studio. Sadly, this week our family had a direct exposure to the coronavirus and we are now quarantining at home. But that isn't going to stop me from doing some painting for you tonight and joining this incredible organization in raising funds for youth after school art programs. The K-12 Gallery, if you don't know, is an invaluable part of our art community in Dayton. They provide educational opportunities and scholarships to youth artists in training, opportunities for artists to showcase their talent, and after school art education for youth. Both of my girls have taken classes at K-12. And of course, this is always an important mission, but even more so this year during a pandemic that has severely limited access to hands-on art education in the classroom. If you, like me, are unable to attend this year's fundraising event, I encourage you to consider a donation of either funds or supplies to this wonderful organization. Please visit their website, k12tejasgallery.org slash product slash donation and when it asks where you would like your donation to go, indicate art off. To donate supplies, just give them a call and set up a drop off time. The paintings I'll be working on tonight uh, will also be offered for sale with a percentage of the proceeds going directly to K-12. I also have two pieces in the gallery right now. Uh, they're on display through December titled Impact and Dark Matter. Both acrylic pieces measure 15 by 30 inches and seek to capture the action of physical forces in a single still moment on canvas. You can visit my website at kellyporterwilson.com for more information on those pieces. And as they are currently on display, please contact K-12 directly with intent to purchase. Thank you so much for your support. Now let's get painting. All right, I have changed into a cruddy old t-shirt and got my gloves on here because as you can probably tell from my work surface fluid art is very very messy um, it also takes a lot of paint I've been doing some pouring this week in anticipation of, uh, of the event uh, this weekend and um, that wasn't a problem until we all had to quarantine very suddenly and I couldn't go out and get any more paint so I am working with what I have here um, had to adjust my plan a little bit for what I'd like to do today, um, but let's see if we can work some magic. So the first thing I'm going to be pouring on, this is a, um, a finish ready wooden circle, it's about an inch and a half thick, and I have uh, prepped this with primer already. The colors I am going to be working with for this piece um, are titanium white and these are all uh, specially mixed well that one's not even labeled but I know what it is <laughs> these are all specially mixed so I, I take um, let's see one part of acrylic to about two parts of Floetrol depending on how thick I want to make it um, and then mix that uh, with water to consistency the thinner the paint is, the more mixing I'm going to get. The thicker, the less mixing. I'm also going to be using the blue. Deep green permanent. Burnt umber. And some metallic gold. You can tell I use that a lot. I love that. I really like working with uh, different kinds of pigments that have, that have a different reflectivity to them. Because that's where you really get some amazing depth. Um, and when you view these pieces in person you can see the light hit it in different ways and you'll have some areas uh, that create beautiful shadows and, and reflections um, in that way all right well i am setting up to make a video that's way too long so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to prepare my cup So 
But something that I'm always keeping in mind as I'm preparing my cup and really composing my piece is that uh, these, these different pigments have different weights depending on the minerals that are used um, to create it. So titanium white here is my heaviest that I'm working with. So I know it's, it, it's gonna tend to sink. That creates some really gorgeous layers I'll go here. Um, and in beautiful shadows and patterns uh, as the pigments interact with each other. Now I don't want to mix these. There's going to be some mixing that happens on its own, but I am going to, oh, I don't want to do that, Let's do a little streak on the side. Let them just interact organically. That's something that I really, really love about fluid art is this um, organic nature to it. My background is in portraiture. That's kind of where I got started. Um, and illustration and medium where, oh, I almost didn't get that open, where I have to be, where I'm very detail oriented. Um, things have to be just so. And I came across pour painting in a time that I really, really, really needed it. Um, I, I, I wasn't able to put the pencil to paper um, at the time. And I needed another outlet. I needed something that was more free. And this uh, style of painting really provided that for me. And I'm very thankful for that. I'm not going to fill this up all the way, but I really, really want a lot of blue. A heavy blue base here. But I do need a lot of paint to cover this area and also uh, in order to compose this image properly. Fluid art takes a lot of paint. <laughs> it just does. That's the nature of the beast. So it's, it, it's pretty expensive to get going if you're just learning. But um, up until the pandemic hit, uh, I was offering classes in this, which is super great because you get to use all my materials and just pay a flat fee and everything's mixed for you. And you don't have to waste all of that money and you get to give it a try and figure out what works and what doesn't work. So I will absolutely keep you posted in terms of um, when I am able to start that back up. But right now it's just not safe. We'll keep everybody safe. Okay, I think, oh man, I think that's gonna be, I think it's gonna be pretty good. Just, just, just a little bit more green, I think. Not much. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and um, add some silicone to this mixture. I just decided that. Ideally, um, I would have put this in the middle, but that's okay. So what the silicone does, you know, acrylic is a water-based paint. So when you add any type of oil into it, it's going to push the pigments, the um, anything that's water-based, away from it. Um, that creates uh, some really gorgeous effects. Um, they call cells, uh, these big circles that are not bubbles, but the droplets of silicone that push away all the paints and really let you see down through all of the gorgeous layers. Okay, so right now the paints are interacting with each other. They're sinking, they're rising, the silicone is working, it's, it's magic. There's some pretty cool things happening in there. Let's see, I need a little stir stick. Okay, I really don't want to mix this too much, but since I put the silicone on top, I'm just gonna do a little figure eight sort of maneuver through there to encourage that to go down through the layers. Wish I would have put that in the middle, but that's okay. 
All right, now for the fun part. <laughs> this is where we get really, really, really messy. Um, and it's really tricky. I hope I don't waste a whole container of paint. I would like to use, um, I, I would like to flip this. I'd like to do a, a, a flip cup technique. And I'll show you exactly what that is. So I'm gonna take this big, <laughs> big heavy wooden thing and flip it upside down. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my paint cup and, oh God, push it up against the surface, make a sandwich and flip it over. Oh. That has been catastrophic in so many instances. <laughs> but the reason that I'm doing that is because I, I, I don't wanna pour this out I want the layers to stay in place and that sinking and rising action to happen um, between the different pigments. So I'm actually gonna let that set and develop in the cup for a little bit because there's a lot happening um, before I pick it up. So this surface is dry. And if I were to just pick this up right now, I would get a lot of stick. Um, and the paint, it wouldn't move around freely, which depending on how you're composing your image might be exactly what you're looking for. However, I would like this to move around a bunch. So I am going to pour around some white that has been thinly mixed and just kind of encourage that to cover the board here all the way up to the edges. Ooh, I got some coming out already. Ooh, I like that, that's pretty. Oh gosh, I'm getting dangerously low on white. <laughs> I really want this to cover the whole thing, but man, just to mix the jar of white that I have today, I was cutting open tubes and scraping it out. That is the last of the last of it. All right, let's see what we can do. I'm not going to worry about covering the edges because I am low on paint. I can finish the edges later. Usually I like to cover the edges on, on this kind of a, a piece though because it allows the pigments to flow over the edge. It doesn't stick there. Um, but man, I'm low. So we're going to make do with what we have because I need a little bit of white for the next piece. I can't use it all lot here. So what I'm doing is just just encouraging the paint um, to move across the entire surface. I'm not scraping here. I'm not putting any pressure at all. I'm just just dragging um, this spatula or putty knife across the surface. I don't want any dry spots because if I have a dry spot the paint is going to stick right there. And it's not going to move around it freely like I want it to in this particular piece. Okay. Oh, come on. I gotta have enough. I don't want any mounds, any, any little, little mounds or dry spots or bubbles really affect how the paint moves. And you can use that to your advantage. I, plan on doing that in the next piece. But this one I want to really move freely. You'll see what I mean. Okay. Got a little bubble here that I don't want. Those cute toothpicks on me for this reason. And they're also handy for picking out little globs of paint if I happen to get those. Which I might get because I'm using the end of the tubes here of my paint. Okay. All right, let's pick it up. I'll let that spread out. See what it does. We got a lot of gorgeous layering um, happening through here. Some real pretty silicone cells coming out. It almost looks like 
like jewels. I'll let that spread out on its own for just a second before I attempt to um, stretch and compose this piece. Right now, everything is in the hands of the pigment and how I have decided to layer them. Okay. Now it's my turn and I get to decide how this is going to go. I want to very gently tilt this. And this is this is called stretching. I'm going to go ahead and stretch my image. And I would like to take this side over the edge, but not. I would like to leave um, some white space in this, and you'll see why later. Got big plans. But you know, sometimes the piece has other plans, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> you see these dry corners, see what I mean? I have a little, I have a stick right there. I need to encourage that over the edge because it doesn't want to go. It wants to stay right there. Okay. Get the weight of the paint back toward the middle so that I can cover these other sides here. Still stretching and composing. I lost video there somewhere, but I've been doing this for a while, so I think we're still good. <laughs> I have the 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 wooden circle propped slightly on one side just allowing this middle area to move very slowly i'd like to expand um, this section i'm okay with losing a little bit of this i love what's happening through here and we have some really pretty shadows um, that are emerging i like that very much I don't usually do this while the canvas is still stretching, but this is where I had my cup to begin with. So this is a dry area, um, and I'm getting a little stick there, and I'd really like that to move. So I'm just gonna just gonna encourage it a little bit, change shape. All right, so now I'm going to compose this area, um, and I'm going to do that first by moving more white into it, and then I am going to come back this way um, to expose some of the layers that, that are under there. All right, sorry about that hard cut there, but I apparently ran out of storage space, so I had to go ahead and clear out some space. But anyway, this is where we've ended on this piece. I am very, very happy with it. I'm happy that we were I was able to preserve some white space over here, and I, I, I love the movement that's happening. I am going to let this set and develop. Um, there's still a lot of layering that's going to gradually come through as those pigments interact with each other. And I will be posting a final image of this in a few days. I want to really uh, let it develop fully because it will continue to change a little bit. Um, and this will be um, a piece that will be for sale, uh, benefiting K-12 Gallery.